Welcome to this video about CBS wastewater hydraulics. In this video, you'll learn about the different types of uh, wastewater hydraulics offered by Grundfos and their characteristics. For the different types of wastewater discharge from a commercial building, you need different types of pumps and therefore also hydraulics. And this is due to the content in the wastewater. You can have different kinds of solids depending on where the, the wastewater is discharged from. You can have fibers, you can have vehicle matters, urine, uh, sand and small uh, stones also. And it's very important to have a reliable wastewater system that you have a pump suitable for the wastewater type. Grundfos offer impeller types which can handle all kinds of uh, wastewater discharge from a commercial building. And now we'll look into the four types of, of impellers. First, we have the semi-open multivane impeller. This is the impeller in the DP pump and it's suitable for handling uh, drainage water with very small particles. Uh, and it has a free passage of 10 millimeters. Then we have the semi-open uh, single vein impeller, and this is the impeller we have in the EF pump. This pump can handle a little bit larger particles than the DP pump and has a free passage of up to 30 millimeters. Then we have the tube impeller, this is the new development from Grundfos. It is a tube impeller which can handle large particles from uh, 50 up to 160 millimeters. This impeller is uh, mounted in our SL and our SE pump. Then we, ha we have the Super Vortex impeller. And this is uh, also the impeller you can have in the SE and SL pump. And the free passage of this impeller is 65 up to 100 millimeters. The S-tube and the Vortex impeller can handle gray and black wastewater. And I will make a deep dive into these two impeller types in a minute. That was a lot of information about the Super Vortex and the S-Tube impeller. So here we have made an overview of the comparison of the two impeller types for you. My conclusion will be that you should choose the Super Vortex impeller when you have a high dry solid content in the wastewater and you require high operation reliability. The S-Tube impeller you should choose when both the uh, non-clogging capabilities and the high efficiency is of importance. When we talk about wastewater hydraulics, we also talk about the free passage. The free passage is the spherical uh, diameter through the pump. The pump should be able to handle the solids contained in the wastewater from the different uh, discharge units in the commercial building without clogging. And, and uh, it, it means that we are talking about the non-clogging capabilities of a pump and also non-jamming capabilities. We want the wastewater system to be uh, as reliable as possible. And here it's very important that we select a pump with the right free passage for the wastewater uh, content. Yes. To demonstrate what is the free passage, we have here a tube impeller. And with this ball of 80 millimeters, we can show that the free passage of this impeller is 80 millimeters and it can handle solids up to this size. This is the optimal uh, diameter when you want to handle unscreened wastewater. This means uh, gray and, and black wastewater from a commercial building. When we talk about the non-jamming capabilities, this means that you don't have solids from the wastewater which is uh, being stuck in between the impeller and the pump housing. Uh, 
I'll get more into the details of the non-clogging and non-jamming uh, capabilities of the uh, tube impeller uh, in a minute. Now let's take a look at the relation between the clogging capabilities and the free passage within the hydraulics. Here you see an illustration showing the clogging capabilities and the free passage. And as you can see, the larger free passage you have, the lower risk for clogging uh, there will be. Grundfos is uh, trying to uh, optimize the impellers they offer, the tube impeller and the vortex impeller, continuously in order to make the wastewater installations as reliable as possible, so the downtime will be as low as possible. Now let's take a look at the characteristics of the S-tube and the Super Vortex. Both our SE and our SL pumps are available with the two impellers. We will start taking a look at the Super Vortex impeller. Here you see the uh, Super Vortex impeller offered by Grunfoss. This impeller is suitable for wastewater with uh, large solids, fibers and also abrasives. The impeller is available with a free passage of 65, 80 and 100 millimeters. The efficiency for this impeller is quite low compared to the tube impeller we will talk about later. So there's a, a maximum of 44% uh, uh, inefficiency for this impeller. However, the non-clogging capabilities are better uh, because the flow uh, of the wastewater is outside the impeller. This means that the risk for clogging is, is low and therefore also the number of visits uh, by service will be lower and therefore the service cost uh, can be reduced with this impeller. So here you get an impeller where the, reliabil the reliability uh, for handling uh, wastewater with large uh, solids is very high. Here you see the uh, tube impeller offered by Grunfoss. It's a closed impeller and it is available with a free passage of 50, 80 and 100 millimeters. Grunfoss have refined the old uh, tube impeller invented back in the 80s, so it has a very high efficiency and also very good non-clocking capabilities. This impeller you would use if the operating hours of the wastewater system is high, because here you get the high efficiency. Actually, you could obtain a hydraulic efficiency of up to 80 to 85 uh, percent, which means uh, the operating cost is quite uh, reduced uh, compared to a vortex impeller. It cannot handle as much dry solids as the vortex uh, impeller, though. As I mentioned, uh, this design is optimal for uh, non-clocking capabilities and also non-jamming capabilities. It not only have a very uh, good uh, free passage uh, design, but also uh, the spin-out groove uh, you have here uh, between the pump housing and the um, and the impeller means that you have uh, a reduced uh, recirculation of the wastewater. So the wastewater trying to uh, run back will be let into the inlet and it will also cut solids into uh, smaller pieces. Here on the sides we have some cutouts which also uh, reduce the risk for, uh, for jamming. What I would like to add is uh, about the uh, wave-shaped ring, which is uh, mounted in the pump housing and running against the uh, spin-out ring. When the wastewater trying to run back to the inlet uh, runs here, the, the wave-shaped uh, ring will create a pulsating effect, creating uh, a flow back into the inlet. The last part in this video is about uh, uh, grinders. 
Here you see uh, the cutter system we use in our grinder pumps. We have the uh, SEG uh, pump. Um, and by using this cutter system, the solids in the waste wastewater will be uh, fragmented into very small pieces. And this means that you can reduce uh, the pipe size uh, in the system considerably. Actually, with the SEG uh, grinder pump, you can use uh, DN32. When operating this kind of pump, a grinder pump, it's very important that the flow is not too high. If the flow is too high, the cutter system will have problems chewing the solids uh, in the wastewater and the pump will stop. So you need to uh, run this pump uh, not too far to the right on the performance curve at a maximum of uh, two liter per second, I would say. But uh, this pump is very uh, effectively. And uh, again, if you need to reduce uh, the pipes in the system, the grinder pump is the uh, optimal uh, solution. Now you have watched the video about CBS wastewater hydraulics. You have learned about the different types of impeller types in Grunfoss. You have learned about free passage. And you have now learned about what is the difference between the tube impeller and the super vortex impeller and the arguments for selecting either one of them. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.